chapter is probably the most variable chapter of the semester because it always is at the end of, it's usually the last thing we teach, which means there are a bunch of things we either choose to cover or choose not to cover. Um, I'm going to go through the ones that are most consistently taught throughout the years, and if anything is not discussed in these videos, that doesn't mean it's not going to show up on your final, it means I didn't know they went over in lecture, and so I couldn't really talk about it. So the first thing to talk about that's commonly asked is structures, they'll give you structures and ask you which is derivative of a prostaglandin or derivative of cholesterol or something like that. So I'm going to talk about the base structures, the most common structures you're going to see involved with lipids. First of all, the structure that kind of looks like a jellyfish, a five-membered ring with two tails coming off of it that are some length of carbon, sometimes there are double bonds on these, and sometimes there's stuff on the ring, but this is kind of the skeletal structure. This is what a prostaglandin looks like. Prostaglandin. Okay. The next one to talk about is this. If you ever see a structure that has one, two, three, six-membered rings, and then a five-membered ring, this is a derivative of cholesterol. If you ever see a, something that looks like a bunch of esters connected to one chain, this is your example of a triglyceride. And triglycerides are made up of fatty acids connected to a glycerol. What that looks like, if you wanted to know what the glycerol and the fatty acids look like, all you have to do is erase the bond between the double bond O and the oxygen that's part of this connecting chain for each of these. And now you're going to turn all of those OH, those oxygens that lost their bonds into OHs and stick OHs onto the carbonyls. And what this shows is the carbon chain with the three OHs, that is your glycerol. And the carbon, the carbon, the long carbon chains with carboxylic acids on them now, those are fatty acids. The process through which you combine these two to make the triglyceride is called saponification, which is something you learned about for the third exam, actually, or maybe no, the second exam. It's where you take a carboxylic acid and turn it into an ester, which is what we had as the triglyceride. The final structure that's derivative of things that we need to talk about, and the one that we go into the most detail in lipids consistently, are things that are derivative of terpenes. Now ter terpenes fall into a special category, because with prostaglandins, cholesterols, and fatty acids, there's not much we can really ask you about, aside from identifying what kind of structure these are. But terpenes actually have a couple rules that um, in are incorporated that help you to tell them or help you, well, not really help you anything, it's just what we can ask questions on, really. So, let's talk about this. The most common rule that they will ask about, and probably the only rule they'll ask about, quite frankly, is something called the isoprene rule, or the isoprenoid rule. And what the isoprene rule states is that your structure is made up of nothing but building blocks that have this general shape. A shape that has five carbons in total, one, two, three, four, and five, and the way they're connected is you have a bunny ears, three carbons that are part of bunny ears, and then an ethyl tail. And if we go to this structure, it should follow that. The way you figure out if a structure follows the isoprene rule is start by dotting every carbon you're looking at so you can keep track of where they are. And now, we said it needs to be five carbons with bunny ears. So e the easiest place to start is where there are clear bunny ears, like here. And circle one, two, three, four, five. There's one isoprene, okay, bunny ears with an, ethyl chip, with an ethyl tail. Now, there's a double bond there, but that doesn't really change it. It's still the structure that we're referring to as an isoprene. And now, is this an isoprene as well? It is, because I can go one, two, three, four, five, okay, and there's a second isoprene. So what the isoprene rule states is that, the isoprene rule states that your entire structure is only made of isoprenes. And so there are two questions they could ask. One question is how many isoprenes are in your structure? 
In this example, the answer would have been two. Another question they could ask is, does this structure follow the isoprene rule? And if you can only find isoprenes, then it does. But the second, say we add another methyl, like over here. Well, there's a carbon right here, but you can't draw an isoprene unit with that. This carbon's kind of sticking out and doesn't count. And so this structure would no longer follow the isoprene rule. So here's an example question you could get. Here are three structures and we're asking which of these structures follow the isoprene rule? Meaning there is nothing but isoprene building blocks within these structures. So let's start with this structure over here. The best place to start when you're trying to find isoprenes is from the bunny ears. Because whenever you see these two methyls sticking out, that's usually akin to the bunny ears of the isoprene. So I'm going to start by circling every carbon so I can follow them. I'll make sure I don't accidentally leave out any when I start circling for the isoprene. So starting from the bunny ear, I'm going to go like this. And now I can go around like that, and there's one isoprene. One, two, three, four, five. Now I need to see, do I have another isoprene? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five all together, but it's only a straight chain. So maybe circling around this way wasn't the correct way to circle. Let's try circling to the left with this first one. Just because it doesn't work out one way you circle doesn't mean it's automatically out. Try a different way before you rule it out. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, let's say I'm still going to use these bunny ears as my starting point, and I'm going to circle around this way. So there's one isoprene. And now I do one, two, three. Well, here's a bunny ear. And then one, two. Hey, look, I found an isoprene. So this structure does, in fact, follow the isoprene rule, which is kind of funny because I intended it not to. Well, there you go. So one, two, three, four, five, bunny ears and a tail. One, two, three, four, five, bunny ears and a tail. So this one checks out. It follows the isoprene rule. Now for this one. Um, so, again, the best place to start is from your bunny ears that they give you, so I'm going to do one, two, three, or we'll circle your carbons first so we can keep track of them. Okay. So another way to check yourself always is to count, well, isoprenes are multiples of five, so if it follows the isoprene rule, it must have a total number of carbons that is a multiple of five. And I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can't rule this one out just by that. I have to actually start trying to draw things. So start drawing, let's say I go to the right. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, bunny ears and a tail. And now I go here, well, right here is a set of bunny ears. One, two, three, and then one, two. This also has an isoprene. So this one checks out as well. And now, this last structure right here to make it kind of tricky. Start from a set of bunny ears. Let's start from the bunny ears down here. One, two, three. So before I start, I'm going to circle all my carbons again so I can see them all. Okay, start by drawing. Let's draw to the left. One, two, and now I need that. Okay. Now if I draw this way, notice there's no way to draw a line around this circle without overlapping. You can't overlap your circles when you're drawing out isoprenes. One isoprene is mutually exclusive from the other, which means this isn't the right way to draw my line. I can't go cutting off carbons. I need them to all connect properly. So I'm going to try and draw around the right then. One, two, three, and then one. Let's connect this way. Well, again, I run into the same issue I was talking about here. If I draw this way, this carbon is sticking out by itself, and there's no way to draw a circle around it without overlapping another circle. So this can't be the right way to draw either. So what if I draw it like this? One, two, three, four, five, bunny ears, and a two-carbon chain. So this, that's an isoprene. And now here's another set of bunny ears. One, two, three. Four, five. There's my other isoprene. So it turns out all three structures that I drew were able to follow the isoprene rule. But basically, if you ever draw a structure where no matter how you draw your circles around your carbons, you have some carbon that you can never circle, or a couple carbons that you can never circle, then you know that does not follow the isoprene rule. So the answer to this question is all three structures follow the isoprene rule.